Now then, uh, we're on with another project, and this time it is fitting one of these. The Eddy Diverter. And here's the manual. And here is the unit. So we're just going to crack on with this. I'm putting this in the workshop at the moment as a demonstration and also I need to get some photos of it for a different project that you will all be aware of in about a year's time. And yeah, just move it out of the way so you can see where I'm at. Yeah. So we're just going to put this together. I've already got the subframe on the wall, which is very handy. So let's just go through this. There's the subframe or mounting bracket, and that is about an inch and a half. And there are three main mounting points, and they've got holes and slots. So that's really easy to uh, put together. And then it's a matter of locking it in place with however many you want to put in the bottom there. And then there's a lug here and a lug there. So the, the unit locks onto that lug and these screws just hold it in place. So I'm just going to do that. So basically this goes either side and those lugs as you can see go in there then it sits down lifts up and the two screws drop into slots so the screws don't need to come out which is again perfect so there we go we have supply there and we have heater outputs here and the LCD screen with a cover and it's got a little arrow to show that it's got a plastic film on it which I quite like so there's the input there's the communications port for the um, clamp on sensor and Here's the outputs. Go on, focus. There we go. There's the heater outputs. Having a, um, a physical paper manual is brilliant. None of this. Oh, it's downloadable nonsense. And although I haven't read everything yet, there's a switch there. We'll find out that, what that's for. And four buttons for programming it that will be for programming the preferences of the various heaters this has got two outputs but then there is a further board that you can get which then operates further outputs or further heaters so once heater one and heater two are up to temperature you can still continue diverting and these can be connected to a Harvey hub so that you can run several or because these have a minimum output or export setting you could have two or three of these all with slightly different export settings so let's say for instance this one was set at naught and the next one would be set at 100 watts so only when this one starts exporting power does the second one start diverting to extra things so that means that if you've got quite a large or you've built up over time a large um, collection of arrays then you don't end up exporting um, a lot of power when it's a very sunny day you can continue to divert to other things 
and of course you know preferences can be set etc etc anyway so we'll um we'll have a look at that later on right it's another day and i've wired this uh, eddy into the mains if you imagine this could be the circuit that feeds your immersion heater you could break into that circuit yeah if you wanted to feed the immersion heater that is yeah. and then you can add extra things to the eddy so the power cable comes down and it goes into there okay and then across here we've got an outlet that's L1 there's L2 there as well in amongst that lot I think it's just behind that black there it's the second uh, terminal long then you've got the neutral then neutral to and then earth an interesting thing the screws for these clamps let me just go back a bit see that's got screws in it these clamps are just held by little grips until you are got your cables in place and then the screws are in a little bag that comes with the aerial that fits on top of this I'm not going to fit it but on top there there's an aerial for connection to the Harvey and all those sorts of things all the extra bits of kit and an internet connection so there we go so I've wired that in and that goes down down this wire here to a fusible switch and then it goes to a heater now I've just put this heater here just as an example normally you this would go to your immersion heater and then L2 would probably go to a storage heater or it could go to two separate immersion heaters in two different levels of the tank so L1 could be a higher uh, immersion heater higher up in the tank so you get hot water at the top of the tank if you've got say short sun or not very much sun in one day and then L2 would be at the bottom of the tank to get more hot water so it's like quick demand and, and um, um, storing more heat if it's available but we have in the house we have L1 as immersion heater and L2 as a 2.4 kilowatt storage heater anyway so there we are it's not that sunny today unfortunately it might come up a bit sunny later on but let's just put the uh, I'm just going to put the screws in the in that um, cable strain relief clamp and then put the front on so once we've got the uh, the mains wired in we have to put a sensor in place for the eddy to know when it's exporting power and you put that and it just clamps round and you put it on the mains input now it's got to be just on a single core it can't be on a big fat cable with, with uh, live and neutral in there it's got to be basically it's got to be on the live but if you need to put it on the neutral you can do but that's the theory it plugs in like I've shown you the CT plugs and it just clamps around the cable now just on this situation because we're in the workshop it's slightly different but I'll give you an example I've just got this fuse box down here and you see these big double insulated mains input cables to that fuse box reds live obviously and uh, as you can see the big fat individual cables so the the CT sensor clamps round that and it's got to be the right way round and it shows it in this book here 
in the manual if we can see down there and it won't there's an arrow as you can see an L is towards the fuse box or the consumer unit and K is towards the electricity meter okay so I'm just going to go and fit that it's a bit different on this situation but don't let that um, confuse you so there's the uh, sensor and that's the live input and I've doubled up the cables on the live there um, because there was a spare cable in the armoured underground cable I might as well double it up to reduce the volt drop so there we go so the sensors in and I've run the cable through and it's going to go to the eddy so that's where the uh, the sensor it's called a CT sensor um, is wired up positive red to positive black to negative and those are little sockets or little plugs I'll see if I can just demonstrate that there you go if you want to play with those and swap them around or feed wires through or something like that they just unplug see positive there negative there so we're nearly ready it's a very long cable that comes with this uh, CT sensor which is great um, that allows for quite a lot of flexibility so now all we need to do is put the front on and I think we're nearly there so the front has got tabs on there and one's bigger than the other and the big one goes to the bottom and then the screws go in so I'll just do that off camera so I've got all the cable restraints in place um, the CT sensor is all wired up, the front's on, the load is switched on, um, so let's just see what happens. I've, decided, I've got this on a 15 amp breaker, so we'll just switch this on, and something's happening. So let's just zoom in. Bearing in mind it's a reasonably grey day today, as you can see at the moment, it's only exported 400 watts. And it's put in 400 watts into the heater, which it imagines is a um, immersion heater, but it's just a load for our purposes. And there you go. Okay, and then when, of course, that gets up to temperature, it will switch over to channel 2. Let's, I'll uh, get a bit more footage if the sun comes out a bit later. But that's the basic theory. So here we go. The sun's come out. It's just a narrow window today. But there you go, there's the idea. And then when of course heater number one, and you can see a little number one next to that um, impression of a hot water cylinder, when that's up to temperature of course, if we had number two circuit fitted, it would transfer to that. And if you look down here, number one, there's a little blue light showing that that's the circuit that it's operating on and then the timer on the display has just decided it doesn't want to illuminate anymore anyway so there you go there's the idea and it's interesting or very good that you can see both the generation and the grid side so if we started using a huge amount of power then the little arrows would be running from the grid into the house 
and you can see what's going on. Some other diverters don't have that function and for some people it's fine but for me I like to see what's going on. Catch up with you soon.